How's it going, folks? I'm Des with DesFit, and today I've got a pretty special interview for you. So uh, this is Killian Jornet. Killian, how are you doing today? Very good. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being on the channel. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Killian is um, one of the most accomplished ultra runners. He's got FKTs on, I think, uh, summoning Mont Blanc, um, the Matterhorn. <laughs> He's won UTMB. And recently, uh, well, this is the reason you're out here in Colorado right now, is that uh, you just won the Hard Rock 100. So how was that race for you? It was very good. It was, uh, I love the area, like the San Juan Mountains are beautiful. And the, the, the community around Hard Rock is very special. It's, it's a, a group of nice people and uh -huh. really like, uh, yeah, it's, it's not about the competition, about the performance, but just to have fun time there and find each one's challenge and just like spend time with the mountains and, and with uh, the crew and the families and everybody and it was it was a good race like I felt good and and it was uh, it was very fun. Did you have expectations going into this race because it has been five years since you've done this race? Yeah I it's been yeah the last years with like COVID and and and, and everything the race was also like cancelled one year for us now so it's been like a few years and this year, like, uh, I wanted to prepare for short races and long races at the same time, so the training it was super interesting for that. And, uh, yeah, I, I was feeling good, like, the training, the preparation was good. And, and then, like, of course, like, I, I wanted to, I thought I had the shape to be there for, for winning, but it, it was a, a lot of other, like, uh, strong runners. So then, like, you see how it goes to play a bit with the, with the tactic and that, and then... Yeah, it was uh, the expectations, like if you are very competitive, it's always like, okay, I want to try to win, but then like, you never know how, how that will go. So I know that you were running with Dakota and Francois like uh, for a lot of the race. Was that, was that easier or harder to run with friends um, for the majority of the race? Like did that, did that help or hurt you, you think? No, that helps a lot, like especially in long races, like you know that it's going to be like 20 some hours of yeah. running, so like, it's very hard to be alone for that long, mentally, especially to think, okay, now they are far, like now I have a bad moment, or it's just easier to be with, with friends and just chatting, like we're talking a lot, like with, with the guys and just like, you're having a good time, but it's, it's nice just to, to be able to run with someone that has kind of your, sure. your pace and just chatting there. So uh, did, you, did you have a specific strategy in mind actually at the end there? Cause that's where you kind of won the race. Yeah, like I, I knew that, uh, yeah, first for, uh, for, because it's a long race and, and, and you, you don't know what's, how it's going to be. Like uh, I wanted to save strength till the end. And then also like thinking about the races that they are coming the next week. Like, it's like, okay, they, they, if we can go like together until the closest to the, to the finish, the better it is, like the, uh, yeah, the, the less energy you're spending. Mm -hmm. And here it was super interesting. It was a long race, but race like a short race. Like we were like racing together and then just 10 guys like attack and just like pushing hard. And that's how it was like just the, the last up here, like pushing very hard and then straight like pushing hard in the downhill to, to make a gap. Did you do anything to celebrate like afterwards? Um, we were so tired, like I just slept. <laughs> it was like nice sleeping, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your recovery like? Like, did you just do a casual, I don't know, 20K the next day or something like no, that? No, 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 like now, especially like I have uh, two more big races in the next month. Okay. So it's like, okay, I need to be smart, like recover well, don't do too much and just, mm -hmm. just focus on the recovery. So uh, the day after the race, it was uh, completely resting. Then um, we came here to Boulder. Um, this morning we did like a, just like a scrambling and, and moving, so it's, uh, it's not fast, but it's just like to move the body. And yeah, to... okay. So are there any specific things you do for recovery? Like, do you, I don't know, like uh, elevate your legs? Uh, do you use any recovery tools or anything like that? I, I think we focus a lot of times on like the 0.5%. Yeah, it can give you like a 0.5%. Um, but the reality is that the two things that work for recovery is to eat and to sleep. Exactly. And that's the, that's the base. Like uh, you can work, you can do whatever, like uh, tools, things, but no, it's yeah, you need to eat well, <laughs> you need to sleep well. And that's it. So I try to do that. Yeah. What is like a typical like week of, um, training look like? I know, I mean, I know you have a race schedule that's all over the place. Like, but like, is there, is there like, give me, give me kind of like your typical week of, of training. Yeah. So uh, I, first I divide my 
season in two big parts. So normally the winter is more like a long volume zone two. Most of it in skis, like uh, uh, the eighty percent of this training is on skis. Then like uh, in the afternoons I go for a run in the treadmill. But it, that's like every day, like uh, three four hours at uh, zone two with a lot of elevation. That's like kind of every day. And then uh, in the summer. Uh, when I started running, then it's mostly like depending the kind of races I'm doing. But for example, this year that I'm doing like long races and short races, the goal has been like to do um, a lot of or kind of a lot of distance to be able to prepare the long races, but with short sessions to be able to to keep the speed for the short uh, mm -hmm. races. So like for example, the last month it's been like weeks around like 200, 210 kilometers. Okay two to three hours in the morning and then 40 minutes one hour in the afternoon okay you know in terms of uh like the most fun thing that you just like to do like you know give me give me like your typical just fun day of what you what would want to do outside of just training yeah well it's part of the training the oh, mental sure, yeah. and, and you need to have fun and to, if you are not enjoying the training that's like then you will not have progression so um for me like a perfect stage like just the, the Monday before uh, I came here to, to do Hard Rock, I did like a seven hour day long in the mountains. It was like a 35K, so like a, 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 bit like a 20, 20 mile, yeah, 20 mile run, but just like with a bunch of climbing like in the mountains and just like, uh, yeah, very technical terrain, just where you need to running, but where you need to use the hands and yeah. you need to use the, the brain to see the roads and mm -hmm. that. So, that's what I love, yeah. Okay. In, in all your adventures, like, is there is there one place that's just been like your, the most fun place that you'd like to go? I like to discover a bit places, but like, for example, like where I live in Norway, it's a bunch of like these kind of things, like big mountains with big ridges or things. Or like, for I was living in Chamonix, and there is like a lot of like things like that, like in the south face of Mont Blanc, or like uh, things like that are cool. Or like coming here to Boulder, like like this morning running in the Flatirons, that's super kind. Like it's it's super nice terrain. Every place, I think it's it has something that it's it's like calling you kind of like, and you need to see what it is. If you are like in in the Grand Canyon, you want to like run down there and up and do a long day because it's it's it's, it's inviting you to do that. If you sure. go to to a place, I don't know that you see it's this uh, small hill, but it's steep. You want to do like there, like super fast. I think it's more like to to listen what the the landscape is inviting you to do. And sure, it seems like. Many of your adventures is just like about the experience uh, uh, more than anything else. Yeah, why, why not? Like, why? Like, we have one life, we need to enjoy. Like, what we take is experience. The rest, like, if it has not experience behind, like, it's, it's useless. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd love it. That's great. All right, so I guess let's go ahead and get to probably the question that a lot of my audience would want us to hear about is, uh, so what watch did you wear for the Hard Rock 100? So I was wearing actually this, uh, this watch, same watch, and it, that's the... The Apex, the Coros Apex Pro. Okay. Uh, Killian is a Coros sponsored athlete. So, um, you know, of their range of watches that they have, is there a specific reason that you chose this one um, for that race? Yeah, they they have uh, three different lines of watches, mm -hmm. uh, and um, like I I like the the Apex Pro because it's it's very light for the functionalities. It's it's crazy light. Like you have the the pacer that is lighter, but in this one, you have like a map navigation. Uh, you have all the the more fine tooling uh, when it comes to um, to elevation, and uh, also the battery is just like incredible. Like a hard rock, it took me like only the fifty percent of the battery. It's uh, it's a sapphire, so it's it's very resistant. Mm -hmm. uh, that I like climbing and putting in with the rocks all the time, and and then the for all these functions, it's it's super light. So I feel that the the vertex, it's it has kind of the same functionality is a bit more like some some more details um, but like for even 100 miles or, or even like longer i don't need that much battery probably for expeditions i would took um, um uh, the vertex but for for racing and training it's just perfect yeah. so for hard rock did were there any specific features that you used on the watch that were specific for that race like i mean was it was it like, are you using it um, specifically for like pacing just to make sure that you're on pace? Is it um, navigation? Is there anything there that you specifically um, like benefited from? 
Yeah, like for in like for training, for example, the the gap, like the oh, the adjusted page, yeah. adjusted page I, it's something that I use because you have like real time, uh, and when I'm doing like the intensity on the on the hills, it's something that I use a lot. Mm -hmm. But in the race, what I use like uh, it's first the navigation, uh, especially hard rock, it's very easy to get lost. Okay. So uh, it's uh, yeah, just to put the 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 map, the profile, and then just to have the alarms in case you you deviate that was very helpful and then like also like the nutrition um, uh, uh, alarms so uh, when I needed to eat it uh, it was sending me an alarm that mostly because like you are chatting with guys so you you forget like about yeah, exactly. oh I need to eat and mm -hmm. you need to go like so that was uh, it's very useful during the race and then it's in altitude so one thing that I had been using it's uh, the days before leading the race, like it's, uh, it has a oxygen blood saturation. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, the days like before, like because I arrived just two days before the race, so sure. to check that, okay, I'm, 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 I'm okay on the, on the blood saturation. Mm -hmm. That's something that I, I was using. And then during the race, mostly like look on, on, the, on the elevation, like where, because I knew that I was kind of struggling after yeah. uh, uh, 13, uh, 14,000 uh, foot, so they're like, okay, yeah, it's now it will be this much time on that elevation before it's sure. down again. So out of curiosity then, with like, you know, all of your more like fun adventure days, do you do you just go out and just like, I don't want to say try to get lost, but I mean, like how, how well do you plan that out? And like, do you then like, you know, use your watch um, uh, in terms of like loading a route or do you just kind of like utilize the maps that are loaded in and kind of just go out and go out and have fun sort of thing? I normally never like, put a road in the, mm -hmm. the watch to go out. Uh, I normally just, because it happens many times that if I put a road, then it's like, oh, it looks so nice there, I go there, and then it's like, the alarm, the alarm, the alarm. Exactly. So like, yeah. it's, uh, I, I prefer just to, to have the map and just like to go around and, and, and discover a bit and, and then use like uh, the, the navigation like afterwards to see where I was going oh, and, sure, yeah. and to see all that, yeah. In terms of uh, like more the uh, physiological features behind the watch, like um, what do you, do you rely on a lot of those in terms of looking at your training load, recovery time? Yeah, I, I, I like to, to make a diary of all my training and, and that's uh, like, of course, like distance, elevation, like uh, at also the feelings uh, during the session intensity and so like that's kind of automatically like loaded but then also like uh, things that the feeling during the session it's very important to load some things like especially when going to the mountains if things uh, when you are taking some decisions especially if you have some problems like if uh, in winter like if it's avalanches or in summer like if you are going somewhere and you are bailing or bad weather to take notes of that to be able to analyze after why I was taking that decision or that other I think that's good for for improving like your decision making mm -hmm. uh, on the training it's 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 mostly that so like how was the load um taking into account like of course like a bit the the temperature and if i'm fasting or if i'm eating or if uh, it is an altitude and the terrain uh, it's very different like if you're running different kind of terrain but then like when it comes to recovery uh, i actually use the the vertex because it has the uh, RHB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I, I look uh, uh, mostly like RHB and then like uh, mood, mood and feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I take into account for recovery mm -hmm. uh, to to see if I need to if I can keep the session as I plan or if I need to push it to uh, another day. Mm -hmm. During the session, I, I focus more on feelings, like uh, when it comes to intensity. And then if I want to focus on something very specific, for example, I know that this session I want to focus on the cadence, then I'm looking, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't think about like heart rate or like uh, distance or just like cadence or if I'm working on, on some kind of intensity, I can be looking on the power and the heart rate. Uh, but mostly like, okay, like I know what I want to do and I know how to do it for feeling the intensity. And then if, if it's something very specific or like, or saturation of oxygen, like I want to do a session where I go low so I can do like apnea or I can be like uh, that and then like I, I can look to the, to the blood saturation. But So in terms of like external sensors, um, what, what kind of accessories do you usually use? Yeah, I, I normally like for racing, for training, as I mentioned, it's more like feelings. I want to like not have any inputs, but then like uh, uh, I, I love to like, I'm, I'm kind of a bit science geek when it comes to training. So I, I 
I wanted to do like a bit of a test kit thing during you know, some races. So for example, this February, I did 100 miles in Sweden. And there I was uh, with uh, the guys at uh, uh, Morten, that is uh, yeah, uh, uh, in Jasper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, then one of their physiologists was following him. He was taking like 15 blood tests during the race. So to look like uh, glucose and to look like lactate and to look uh, the CO2 and to look a bunch of things uh, to see how the fueling was going. And then here in Hard Rock, I wanted to do a bit similar to, to do like a bit of testing during the race to see if we can uh, see what's happening with uh, racing in altitude also uh, when it comes to fueling, when it comes to, to pacing and that. So I, I was uh, uh, looking to the, to the glucose. So with the freestyle, like mm -hmm. uh, the sensor, uh, and then I was looking to the um, blood saturation, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the oxygen uh, blood saturation. Um, Is that mus muscle? Uh, mu muscle, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. muscle uh, oxygen saturation, and then like uh, all the mostly like when it comes to the to the pulse. So are you are you always on that cutting edge? I guess on on uh, sports science, like are you kind of seeking out uh, you know all that, that kind of leading edge of, uh, of technology? I like to. Yeah, it's not that I'm doing that every day at all. Like normally, that I do, I can do that like two three times a year. Yeah. Uh, like to see like okay now I, I know that it's going to be this race or this test and I want to do it there and then like to learn from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's how we improve. Like we, we see how we train and then we base, uh, yeah, we, we can take knowledge from, from all this. What, what's your next plans? Like I know you said you had a couple races. Can you, can you tell us about those at all? Or? Yeah, so in three weeks is uh, Siorginal. That's a 30K race. So like a, a 18, 19 mile race, mm -hmm. uh, very fast. Like there is like two hours and a half in the, in the mountain. So uh, very different from Hard Rock. And then the week after Sierra Ginal is Utimbi, that is a 100 mile race uh, in, um, in Chamonix. So that's like the two, the two next races. And then like I will see after that some rest and see, <laughs> see what's uh, coming up. That's awesome. That's great. All right. Well, um, Killian, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on the channel and chatting. No, with thank me. you. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for, uh, yeah, for listening. Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks for coming out to Colorado. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs>